Hello you guys, it's Katie and welcome back to another video. Today's video I have a crochet market vlog. So all of the prep and the days of the market to share with you guys. Plus I am going to go ahead and include the breakdown for you guys. I talked about making this two separate videos like I used to do for this event, but this event was rather anticlimactic. So I have less footage than I had hoped to. So I'm gonna make this into one video. It'll probably be a longer video, but just gonna go ahead and do it as one video instead of two, since it'd be two pretty short videos. So first I will go ahead and tell you guys that I have the Google Doc linked below that is going to have all the crochet patterns I used for all of these items linked in the order that I'm showing you all of the items. So later in this video, when I'm doing the breakdown portion, and I'm showing you all the items and telling you the prices and everything, I will have that order of the items on the Google Doc. And then I also will have a Google Doc linked below with all of my market setup items linked on it. So like my bins and my tables and tablecloths and like anything you see in my market displays will be linked on that Google Doc for you. Also, I should tell you guys, this was my horror themed Comic-Con. So this was much different from all of my previous events. So if you saw recently, I posted a breakdown of my market season. This market was actually my last one of the season, but it wasn't anywhere close to my typical markets as far as the normal setup and the normal items I'm bringing and all of that. So I didn't include this market in that video. Instead, I decided to make a separate video on this one. So this is that separate video. So first we're gonna get into the prep I did for this event, like price tagging and all of that. And then we're gonna get into the actual two days of the market. And then we'll get into the breakdown. Alrighty, you guys, so it's the day before the market and I really need to get my stuff together. This whole area is like kind of a mess, so just ignore that. But right now I have made the little pieces to make a little felt knife for these ducks holding a knife. So I have four of them and then I need to put together the four knives and then obviously glue them to the ducks. And then I also need to put the bib on Chica here. This is gonna be Chica from Five Nights at Freddy's once she has the bib. So I have it over there that I bought off of Etsy. I just need to glue it on her. So. Those are my two things right now, and then I'll need to start doing price tags. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and put these price tags on these bins. I have some new items since this is a completely new event. So I only have these three to do as far as the bins, but I'm gonna go ahead and do those. 
and then we'll get on to price tagging all the ones that get individual price tags. Okay, so I have all of my horror themed plushies in this bag that are now price tagged. And over here, the yarn room is a mess, so don't mind it. But over here, I have my one off plushies that I normally have in bins, but I am quite low on them. As you can see, normally this bag would be completely full. So since I'm so low on these, I'm just going to put individual price tags on these as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that in a little bit, but right now I'm going to go eat dinner first.
Okay, here are my three bags, pretty much jam-packed full of plushies. So this one is my regular plushies that I bring to all my markets, the ones that have individual price tags on them. This one is a combination of all of my horror ones that I've done for this market, as well as some Halloween ones that I had left over from previous markets on top. And then this one is also some new stuff that I've made for this market. Some Halloween ones I had left over. And then my typical items that I bring to every market that are normally in little bins that I have put price tags on are also in this bag. So these two are pretty full, especially this one. I might even have to transfer some of this to this one. And this one is only about halfway full, but um, still pretty full. So that is all of this. And it is now 10.32. So I'm going to go get ready for bed so I can wake up kind of early tomorrow to film the first part of the breakdown for you guys where I'm going to be showing you all of these items and telling you their price. And then I will be getting ready and headed off to the market. Hello you guys, good morning. If you can hear downstairs, the cats are meowing. I need to go downstairs and feed them. I completely forgot because I've been so wrapped up in getting everything ready for this market, but I have pretty much everything ready. The car is packed. Um, the only things I have to add is this camera, my tripod, and then my yarn bag, which I have all up here that I'm gonna grab, take downstairs. I need to grab my socks and shoes. Um, and then otherwise that's it. Oh, I need to eat something too before we leave and then that's it. So we're gonna leave like 9 30 at the latest so a little less than an hour. Um yeah otherwise that is all um so probably see you guys next time when we're actually setting up at the market.
it's gonna be really hard to hear me because they have some people up there talking at the front. Um, but it's been really slow. I haven't even made my feedback, which I'm quite disappointed with. Um, I'm at $103 in sales so far. So, yeah, haven't sold a single one of my big characters either. So, kind of a uh, bump, but hoping it picks up as it gets later in the day. We're here till eight, so still time. And then also it goes tomorrow, so still time, but still kind of bumped with the amount so far. There's a show thing going on right now, so it's gonna be hard to hear me, but we're packing up early because this has been part of my language, but a day. Um, so we're packing up uh, about an hour early and just getting out of here and hoping tomorrow's better. Good morning you guys, it is day two. Yesterday was not very good, but I'm trying to go into today with a positive mindset and uh, we shall see. Yesterday was eight hours, today is seven hours, 10 to 5 p.m. So we shall see how it goes. Um, not sure how much I'm gonna actually be able to film. Yesterday I couldn't film as much as I had hoped because there was copyrighted music playing the whole time and I assume that'll probably be the same today. Um, but we'll see. I'll at least do footage of us setting up and taking down so that you guys can see that and just put music over that. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'll leave like pretty much right now um, so that we can stop by Duncan and then get there with like 15 minutes or so to set up because we don't have to do the full setup today. We left everything other than the plushies, so. Oh, and the cash box, of course. But that is all we have to put back. So, um, yeah. I will see you guys once we're there.
also adding these that I have from previous events that I didn't bring yesterday, but they're here now. And these keychains. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> my, uh, my bag lady. Oh, I, I realize you're, you're yeah. <laughs> we got munchkins from uh, Duncan and I realize I'm filming you as you're eating. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> she was trying to take pictures with me earlier as I was eating, so. Hey, bag. Hey, bag. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, I already had my first sale and uh, I'm so excited about that because it was, uh, I think more money than I made on any single sale yesterday. <laughs> it was my uh, Five Nights at Freddy's cupcake and then one of the minis. So it's starting out good. Chica's left and that's it for the Five Nights at Freddy's characters. So I'm going to do some rearranging here so that this looks better than how it is right now. You guys, today is going so much better. I could cry right now. It's going so much better than yesterday. Oh my goodness. Now I'm excited to actually give you guys a breakdown of how it's going because um, I'm actually making a profit now. So anyways, hopefully the sales will continue to roll in little by little, but yeah. It is like two hours early, but 
All right, so now that you've seen everything from the market and all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the first portion of the breakdown where I'm sharing with you everything I brought to the market before the market. And as I'm currently sitting here, it is after the market. So in a minute, you will see me here again in this same outfit and everything. And I'll be talking about how the market went. Okay, so it's actually the morning of the market as I'm filming this video. So I need to like get a move on. And it always takes me forever anyway, showing you guys every single item. So I'm gonna just kind of speed run it and show you everything. And then the more in-depth part of this video will be, of course, after the market, showing you what sold and everything. And I am taking all of my regular items as well to this market because I have a big vendor space. So I want to make sure it is filled. So I'm taking all of the new horror, like spooky stuff that I made. And then I'm also taking all of this old stuff that has gone to every market with me, of course. Okay, so this first bag is just regular stuff that goes to every market. So we're gonna kind of go through this quickly because none of this is new. First we have my lobster for 62, jumbo starfish for 32, sunflower turtle for 32, turtle for 30, classic cow for 30, unicorn for 35, giraffe for 35, butterfly for 53, jumbo bunny for 45, mini dog for 15, Heart friend for 20, sheep for 22, round chicken for 16, which I call this a round chicken because I do have other chickens, cow for 17, goat for 20, hello kitty for 50, Hershey's kiss for 20, otter for 12, long neck dino for 15, stingray for 12, mini mushroom for 8, strawberry for 15, snake for 32, hamster for 32, Hippo for 14, and Flounder for 25. So that is all for my individual price tagged items that come with me to regular markets. So now we're gonna get into the rest, which I do have two more bags that are completely full. This bag was only partially full. Okay, on to this next bag, which has some Halloween like spooky stuff and then also some regular stuff. So I have four of these turtles that are 35 each. So we have a Sam themed turtle, a Freddy Krueger themed turtle, a Jason turtle, and a zombie turtle. So these are gonna go in their own little bin that has a price tag. That's why they don't have individual price tags. But that is these. Next we have ducks with little knives and these are going to be for 15 each and I have four of them. Next we have pumpkins, which I have a ton of, which by the way, I just brought all of my like Halloween fall stuff from previous markets as well. So that's what this is. And I have a ton of these. I have 13 of them and they are for $17 each. Next we have some mini ghosts. These are for 10 each and I have six of them. Next we have mini velvet pumpkins. I have four of these for five each. Next we have two of these big candy corns for 35 each. Next we have these Five Nights at Freddy's minis. So I have four of them here to show you. I have three Bonnies, three Chicas, and then one Freddy and one Foxy. And these are 10 each. Next we have this small zombie for 15 and this pumpkin for 22. And now everything else here is regular items that I bring to every single market. But I did go through and put individual price tags on all of these so that I won't have all the bins out at this market. So I have $15 chickens and I have five of them. Next I have two mini bears for 12, one duck for 14, one chunky mushroom for 15, three pickles for 15 each, two penguins for 14, one blueberry for 12, one mini Yoda for 12, two bees for 15, two whales for 12, octopus for 12, two mini fish for eight, two gummy bears for 10, four aliens for 12, and two leggy frogs for 12. And then I do have keychains at the bottom of this bag as well, so I'm gonna show you those, and then we'll move on to the final bag. I have two skull keychains, which all the keychains are 10 by the way. So two skulls, two Jack Skellingtons, 
one bee, one heart, three flowers, four gummy bears, two frogs, and three leggy frog keychains. So that is all for this bag. And we're going to move on to the final bag, which is all of the big horror Halloween ones. Alrighty, on to the final bag, which as you can see, this one is very full. First, we have two bats for 20. Three of these ghost car hangers for 20. Two of these glow in the dark mini ghost for 14. Spider for 35. Two of these candy corn bees for 15. Mini candy corn for eight. Oh, I also have a random chicken nugget thrown in here for 10. So this actually needs to go with my more like regular themed stuff. We have this spider for 35, this witch for 45, this Frankenstein for 35, this bat for 35, and then I have this ghost dressed as a shark for 30, which I do believe this is all of my like Halloween items that I am bringing from previous markets. So all of what's left in here is the new stuff that I've made for this market specifically. Oogie Boogie for 42. We have Five Nights at Freddy's Foxy for 60. We have a Double Cow for 35. Beetlejuice for 75. We have Billy for 85, which he is my second most expensive item. The most expensive is Ghostface for 90. We have this small Jack Skellington for 25. We have this creepy little axolotl for 15. We have the Five Nights at Freddy's Cupcake for 17. We have Sam for 73. We have two Freddy's for 65 each. We have Cthulhu for 43. Mothman for 50. We have two Bonnies, one blue and one purple for 56 each. We have a spooky fluffy chicken for 25. Zero for 20. Wednesday, who is probably my favorite, I mean, look at my shirt. <laughs> she is 46. We have this spooky mermaid for 27. We have two chicas for 32 each. We have Slenderman for 40. This zombie that's a little bigger for 17. And finally, I have three of the classics. We have Freddy Krueger for 30, Jason for 30, and Michael Myers for 26. So that is all for everything that I'm bringing to this market, which I will give you the total really quick because I did make a spreadsheet for this market of every single item that I'm bringing so I can tell you how many items that was total and how much money that is total if I were to sell everything. So that is 161 items total for this market, and that is $3,470 worth of inventory. So that is a lot for sure, and I'm excited to go to the market and see what sells, what people are most interested in, and then come back and share that with you guys. So for you, it'll be a few seconds. For me, it'll be a few days, but I will see you guys back here with those details. All right, you guys, so now that you've seen everything I brought to the market and you saw me all optimistic and you also kind of got a little bit of a glimpse into how it went during the footage from the actual market, now you're gonna get a full glimpse into how it went. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the transactions in order like I typically do for these videos so that you get an idea of what was selling first and how sales were in general so this was a saturday sunday event so the first day was saturday and the first day saturday was noon to 8 p.m but we actually ended up taking down everything around 6 30 7 o'clock because it was such a slow day it was dragging on so Anyways, that first day, my first sale was at 12.17, which is 17 minutes into the actual event starting, so it's not that bad, but it felt bad because we were set up so early and then there were 
a lot of vendors coming around looking before the event was actually open, but none of them bought. Nobody bought until 12.17. So anyways, the first thing that sold for me was my Five Nights at Freddy's minis. So actually the first three items that sold for me were Five Nights at Freddy's minis. So the first one that sold was a mini Bonnie. And then we have a few minutes later, the mini Foxy sold. And then at 2.16, so like two whole hours later, I got another sale finally for another mini. And that was for mini Chica. And by the way, you saw this in the market footage, but just a reminder, I did restock some items throughout the market. So if you didn't see it in the breakdown portion, and I say it sold, that's probably why. So while I was there crocheting the second day, I restocked a bunch of the Five Nights at Freddy's minis. And then while I was there the first day, I was crocheting leggy frogs and possums. So I didn't actually have any possums in my inventory until I crocheted one. So just so you know, if I say a possum sold and you're like, she never showed a possum, that's why. So anyways, next sale was two Five Nights at Freddy's minis. So that was a Bonnie and Freddy together. So that was 20 total. Next order was another $20 order for a mini Bonnie for 10 and a $10 leggy frog keychain. Next order was actually my sister. That was my mini candy corn for eight. Next order was the biggest, most expensive item I sold on day one. And that was the $25 fluffy chicken. So I did the fluffy chicken in black that had the red eyes and everything. So that was this item that sold. Around 5.30 I had a $15 cream colored chicken cell. So that is one of the Burnett Blanket speckled colors. And then final item that sold was a $17 pumpkin. And that was actually to my vendor neighbor. So quite a low day in sales to be exact. I'll tell you how much I made on the first day. So that was only $135 in sales. So when I said it was a shit day, it was a shit day. I have to bleed myself out in this video, but it was, in fact, a shit day <laughs> because I, for reference, we'll get more into this, like, towards the actual, like, how much I made portion of this video, but I paid $347.75 tax and all for the vendor fee, so. The fact that I didn't even make the vendor fee back in the first day, and it was a seven hour day, it really, really made me nervous for this event in general. But the second day was so, so, so much better. So starting off strong at 1027, the event started at 10 a.m. on the second day and went to 5 p.m., but we didn't end up packing up about two hours early. Um, anyways, 10 to 5 was the official hours. So first order was $27 worth, which was already more money than any order from the previous day. And that was one of the Five Nights at Freddy's minis, specifically Chica, and then the $17 Five Nights at Freddy's cupcake. Next order, a little bit after, was a $15 bee. I actually brought some of my pride bees that I made in 2023 for pride month and those happened to do well so i brought those on the morning of the second day and then ended up selling a few of them on the second day so that was one of them that sold next was a 12 dollar opossum which again i only made an opossum while i was sitting there i didn't have any in stock before this market so i was glad i made that while i was sitting there because that ended up selling Next order, you guys, I was so happy about. It was a $62 lobster, which if you guys have seen my market videos in the past, you've seen my market setups. I've had this lobster for about a year now that I've been bringing to markets consistently, and it finally sold, of all things, at a Comic-Con. So funny to me, but $62 lobster sold. Next item was the $60 Foxy that sold, which was actually my first of the big 
characters that I made specifically for this event and it finally sold finally had one of themselves so I was super happy about that next we had the small Michael Myers that sold for 26 then you guys this was a big order a family came up and got a few things for each of their kids so first we have the Freddy from Five Nights at Freddy's for $65 I had two of those so the first one sold and then we have a $15 duck with a knife and $15 B as well. So that was super, super exciting. Oh, and that was a pride B by the way. So that was one of the ones I ended up bringing on the second day. So that was a super exciting order. That was $95 total for those three items. Next was another order for a $10 mini, another Foxy. I actually was in the process of making this Foxy while the person wanted to buy it. So somebody came up and actually dressed as Foxy and asked if I had any Foxies. I was like, um, I sold the big one earlier, but I'm currently making a mini one. And she was like, can I buy that right now? And I was like, of course, yeah, I'll have it done in like 10 minutes. And uh, she came back and got it after she bought it. So anyway, that was pretty cool. So that was a $10 sale. Next order was a mini Freddy for 10, which I also made that mini Freddy while I was sitting there on the second day. And then I had the $56 purple Bonnie sell. So the big Bonnie sold, one of the big Bonnies. So that was awesome. And then the next order was the $56 blue Bonnie. So I had both of the Bonnies sold at this point, which was also really exciting. Next order was just a regular item, a $15 mini dino which this girl that actually came up asked if the lobster was gone and I was like yeah it actually just sold she was like dang it I was gonna buy that which is so funny to me because I've never had really I've had a bunch of people tell me the lobster is cool and they really love it but I've never really had anybody be like oh I want to buy this or oh it's like whatever like actually be interested in buying it and then the day it actually sold I had another person interested in buying it so that was kind of ironic in my mind, but anyways. Next was a mini ghost for 10, just a regular one. The next was a $15 duck with a knife. So I sold two out of the four of those I brought to this event. Next was $2 worth of stickers, which I do those as three for a dollar, which by the way, you guys, I thought the stickers would be a real hit at this event because they normally are at my regular events. And this time I had stickers specifically that were of different characters that like Jason and Freddy Krueger and you know even like Halloweeny ones like pumpkins and stuff so I thought they'd be a real hit. People barely even looked at them at this event and when they did they didn't get any so that was the only sticker order I had which was kind of crazy to me but anyways two dollars worth of stickers then next I had a twenty dollar mystery bag sell Next was the $40 Slenderman that sold, so that was also cool that that sold. Then I have a $15 chicken that sold, and the final order was at $2.50, which we ended up packing up around $3 because everyone else was packing up. And it was a big, big order. So the last Freddy that I had sold, the Big Freddy, for $65. Then we have three different ones of the minis. We have a mini Bonnie, a mini Chica, and a mini Foxy, which that was the second Foxy I made while I was sitting there and it happened to sell. So that was awesome for sure. So that left me with only one mini that I came home with, which was a mini Bonnie. So that was another $95 order, which definitely helped out the total quite a lot. So, as I'm sure you can tell, the second day was much, much better than the first day, which I really did not expect because the second day was on Mother's Day. And normally at a Saturday, Sunday event, especially like a Comic-Con like that, the Saturday is gonna be much better than the Sunday, typically. But that was not the case for me this time for whatever reason. So anyways, on the second day I made drum roll please $656 which is crazy compared to the first day 
like so crazy. So the total for the two days in this event in general was $791 and 656 of that was the second day. So I am very grateful that the second day went so much better because I was very bummed after the first day. You guys didn't see much vlog footage of me after the first day because I was very bummed, I'm not gonna lie. I was trying not to let it get me down, but it's something like that is it's difficult because you put, especially like this event specifically, I put so much work into it, specifically prepping for this event. Like my last few markets that I had of the season, if you guys watched my breakdown video talking about all of the markets I had for the 2023-2024 season, then you know the last few markets that I had, I didn't even prep anything for. I just went with what I already had because of this Comic-Con and I was crocheting characters and stuff specifically for this Comic-Con and focusing all of my time on making stuff for this Comic-Con. So the fact that I didn't do near as well as I hoped, which for perspective, my goal was about 1500 to 2000 at this event because of the vendor fee I paid and because it was two days and because of the amount of inventory I had, all of that, that was around there with my goal. So to not even get really close to that, especially on that first day, to only get $135 in sales and not even make my booth fee back on the first day, that was a real, real bummer, obviously. So, as I kept saying, day. I'm gonna hate myself when I'm editing because I'm gonna have to bleep myself out a bunch of times, but anyways. Um, it was definitely not the best event. I think it comes down to poor planning, poor timing, and poor, like, everything all around. Um, they had a bunch of vendors. Um, a lot of really cool vendors that I feel like anybody at a Comic-Con would love to shop from. And the event was like decent as far as the events and stuff going on, but there just wasn't near the amount of people that should have been at an event like this. For perspective, one of my vendor neighbors went up to like the second level where they have like a balcony area and they had like a video game tournament and stuff going on up there. She went up there on Sunday, the second day, around 1 p.m., which should have been around prime time since the event was 10 to 5 on that Sunday. So 1 p.m. should have been like prime time. And she counted 63 people walking around, which from up there, of course, you can't tell if that's a vendor, if that's a shopper or even just like coordinators walking around. They had some photographers walking around and stuff. So that wasn't even all customers. So she didn't count people that were like behind their booths, obviously, but she counted people walking around, 63 people. At an event like this, it should have been a couple hundred at least for like the size of the event space and how big it was, how many vendors they had and everything. Well, I guess it wasn't as big as like some of the ones they have at fairgrounds and stuff like that. It was still a pretty big event and like where it was held and everything. So it really was not the turnout that anybody expected, including the coordinators. So I think a few reasons I'll just get into really quickly and then I'll give you the final like breakdown of bestsellers and everything. But a few reasons I think, first off it was Mother's Day weekend. They did offer moms get in free on Mother's Day if you buy like a child's ticket or an adult ticket with that. So I did see a lot of, they had pink armbands for the moms that got in free on the second day. So most of the people came with their mom and had a pink armband. So I did see that, but still most of the people being 63 people at prime time is quite ridiculous. Um, so I think, I mean, it, it's a comic con. How many people's moms are really gonna choose to do something like that on Mother's Day, you know? Um, so that, and then also the parking situation at this event was quite crazy. When we got there the first day, just setting up, 
we got there like quite a bit later than a lot of vendors because a lot of vendors at these comic cons have like full on huge displays I have to put together. I don't on the other hand so we got there like two and a half hours early instead of like 8 a.m. when you could have got there. So when we got there there were only a handful of parking spots left. My sister came as the event was starting on the first day. She had to park like almost a mile like down the road at like a random doctor's office that happened to be closed because it was a Saturday. So the parking situation was pretty crazy and they did have the option to buy tickets at the door. So I think pretty much anybody that didn't already buy a ticket online and decided they were going to buy a ticket at the door probably decided they weren't going to come and bother like trying to find a parking spot and come into the event because they couldn't find a parking spot and they're like yeah I'm not gonna park like miles down the road to get into this event we're just gonna not go we didn't buy tickets yet so we're just gonna not go would be my idea of what probably happened with a lot of people and then a lot of these comic cons and stuff will have a lot of um like famous people like actors and things like that the only thing this event had was two of the voice actors from Five Nights at Freddy's which was cool for people that are fans of Five Nights at Freddy's and there are a lot of fans of Five Nights at Freddy's out there but how many are there really for something like this you know to make such like a big event like they were trying to do I think they need to have more sorts of either voice actors or actors in general um, to draw people in. So yeah, just in general, that was um, my main takeaways. And I think for an event like this, where the event space has such a small parking situation and um, all the factors that I just mentioned, they should have been charging a lot less for the booths. Now I will say, I think I mentioned this in this video already, but in case I didn't, I did have two booths, so I paid the $347.45 um, for two booths, so it would have been half that for one, um, I believe, or maybe a little over half that. It was 140 something I want to say for one booth. It was 100 something, so either way still 100 something is a lot for an 8x7 booth with one table and two chairs is what you would get or my $347.45, but, but technically it was $325 not including tax. So $325 is what you paid to get two booths, so a 14 by 8 space, two 6 foot tables, two chairs. That's what I paid for, um, which is a lot for the amount of traction this event brought in while yes they planned on having a lot more people come to this event it was a lot for even like the size of the event and everything in my opinion so anyways that's all i'm gonna say about the event because i've already rambled a bunch about this but really quick i'm gonna give you a breakdown of some of the best sellers for this market since uh that's what i always do for you guys of course in these market breakdown videos. Uh, total I collected was $791, like I mentioned. $466 of that was on card, $325 of that was in cash, and $13.52 of that were fees that went to Square. So minus the fees, I made $777.48. So I made the most out of the Big Freddy's that I sold. So I had two of those priced at $65 each. And since I sold both of them, that was $130 together. So that was the most I made off of a single item. The next most, quite close actually, in second, was $120. So only $10 off. And that was the Five Nights at Freddy's minis. So when it came to those, I sold four Bonnies, three Chicas, three Foxies, and two Freddies. Um, and each of those were $10. And then the next most was the Bonnies that I had. So those were $56 each. And I sold the purple and the blue one. So that was $112. The next most was the lobster. Because he was just a big expensive item. 
that took a long time obviously that's why it was so expensive so I made $62 off of him and the final most I guess you could say was $60 Foxy that sold I had the one of him and he sold which by the way side note I didn't sell the big chicas I made I made two big chicas two big freddies two big bonnies one blue and one purple and then I only got around to making one foxy otherwise I would have made two foxies as well because I wanted to have at least two of each of the five nights at freddy's characters um so I didn't sell a single one of the chicas which was kind of surprising to me because those were 32 because I have a lot less details than the other characters so the other characters were 65 for freddy 46 for Bonnie, 60 for Foxy because of the amount of details they had and stuff. So I was surprised that Chica did not sell being so much cheaper than the others, almost like half the price as some of the others and she didn't sell. So I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to give you my final bit of the breakdown, which is what I type out in my spreadsheet. So if you guys saw my market breakdown video then you know these numbers but I will tell you them just in case you are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about um, so these are the numbers that I calculate for myself just to know how well I actually did it in a market because you can say I made $791 that's a good day but depending on the amount of hours you spent at the event and the vendor fee and all of that is that really a good day so this is like what I break down to you know answer that question so vendor fee 347 dollars and 75 cents tax and all revenue so not minusing anything 791 dollars so once you minus the vendor fee from that that was 443 dollars and 25 cents spent 12 hours at this event total it was supposed to be eight hours the first day, but actually spent seven hours there. And then it was supposed to be seven hours the second day, but actually spent five hours since we left a little early both days. So the amount I made once you minus the fee, so that $443.25 divided by the 12 hours total that we spent at the event gives you 36 0.9375 so you might as well round up to 37 so I made $37 an hour for every hour I spent at this event which if you're talking about a regular job you'd be like wow that's a lot but when you're talking about a market that's not a lot at all because it's not just the hours you spend at the event it's many 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 hours prepping at home before the event obviously so I like my average to be like 80, 90, 100 dollars an hour for an event. So at least. So 37 is really, really, really low to put that in perspective. And then the final number that I like to calculate is basically is the vendor fee they were charging worth it? And like I already told you guys earlier, it was not. But just to put that in perspective for you. The $791 that I made, so not even minusing the vendor fee, divided by the vendor fee, which was again that $347.75, gives you 2.274622, so whatever going on and on. So basically just round up to 2.3. So for every dollar I spent on the vendor fee, I made $2.30 back which is a very, very low return on my investment because again, I like that number to be like eight, nine, 10, maybe 6.5 at the lowest is what I would like that number to be. So this event overall, not worth it for me personally. There may have been people that did really well there. Most of the vendors I talked to had the same outcome as me. They did not do very well. Um, but I heard last year this was a really good event. So I don't know if it was because it was Mother's Day weekend. If there were other events going on in the area, I'm not really sure. Um, but all I can say is this event 
is one I will not be attending again based on the outcome that I had at this event. But anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, even though it was not as fun as the ones where I'm like, woohoo, look at this outcome. Which by the way, I'm never trying to be like, oh my goodness, look at how much money I made, like rubbing in anybody's face, that's for sure. Um, especially with me like giving the full breakdown, like was the vendor fee worth it and all of that. It's for educational purposes to show you guys basically how I figure out if a market is worth it for me to do it again. And then also, you know, good ways for you to calculate for yourself if you're interested in doing markets, which I assume you are if you're watching these videos. So I promise it is not that. There are lots of people that do way better at markets than me. I'm just sharing my personal experience to hopefully help you guys out that are watching. But anyways, with that, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm to like the video because it tells YouTube that you enjoyed it and then it'll push the video out to more people that will hopefully be interested in seeing these types of videos, doing markets themselves and hopefully help people out because I definitely wish I had people making these kinds of videos here on YouTube when I was starting out. And if you did enjoy today's video, you have any feedback for me, I would love to hear all of that in the comments. Maybe let me know which of the characters I crocheted was your favorite since I showed you all of those or just let me know if you've had any market experiences like this where it was what you thought was going to be a really big event and it turned it out to be not so good or anything like that I would always love to chat with you guys about or even if you've just bought yarn recently or what you've crocheted recently I always love to chat with you guys so just leave me some sort of comments down below. And if you guys do want to make sure you don't miss out on these videos in the future because this was the last market for my season but I do have a few straggled throughout the summer and then of course quite a lot coming up for the next season. So if you want to make sure you don't miss out on videos for all of those events then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell that way you know every single time I upload a brand new video. And if you guys do want to see more from me, of course, you can check out more videos of mine. My blog with free crochet patterns, my Etsy and my Ribbler shop with even more crochet patterns, all of my social medias, which are all at Katie Bean Creative, and my second channel, which I don't post on very often, but if you do like the vlog style content at these markets and you're interested in vlog style content that is my day-to-day -day normal life, then you can check out that channel as well. All of that is always linked in the description box below for you guys, as well as for today, like I mentioned, the two Google Docs with the market supplies and the crochet patterns will be linked below for you to check out. But with that, that is all for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys here in the next one. Goodbye!